welcome to another video from Trophy Claude. It's been a while but I have been busy. It's been great getting back out into the garden every now and then checking the plants that are under fleece just to see how they're getting on. Here you can see me checking the smaller of my tree fern. It's looking all right at the moment. And here I am looking at the bigger one. Now if you've got one you know exactly what I'm doing. Feeling around that crown. I feel knuckles. Wonderful. This year's flush is safeguarded. Thank you, Straw. And this year I'm experimenting getting my collocasia restarted by blowing into a bag and leaving it in the airing cupboard. Thanks, Rox Chris. And of course, I've got my Ansetti banana restarted using the method I used last year. I'll stick a link in the corner for you so you can see how I did it. Right then, let's get into the tour. It's a nippy but calm day in early March today. Spring is here. It's one of my favourite seasons in the garden. The deciduous plants are waking up and some serious gardening time is about to begin. So this is just a quick tour to share with you how the evergreen plants are getting on. They're the backbone of my garden and they prove that you can have a tropical style garden in the UK even through our wet and cold winters. These plants are the faithful ones, they stick around. And I really didn't want a garden that would disappear with the cold weather. For me it was really important to have some reliable strong plants that are going to stick around so that I can enjoy my garden whatever time I go out. So I'll have a little walk around and share the plant names with you. So if you'd like to create your own tropical style garden with plants that won't disappear in the winter, you'll have some ideas to get started with. And for anyone that's already familiar with my channel, you'll be able to see how my plants are getting on, how they came through the winter and how they're sizing up. Starting over here then, we have here a baby Trachycarpus fortunii that has finally found its groove. It's been planted here for about a year and a half. Nothing was happening with it, but it's come alive and I'm glad to say that I'm seeing new leaves pop through. And next to it we have a Fatsia spider's web, which is doing quite well. It's taken a little bit of leaf damage there, probably from the frost um, on that very top leaf, but generally, it's looking okay for March. The Euphorbia mellifera, the temperature and wet weather have been no match for that at all. It's doing well, it's doing fine. Um, here we have my Musa Basju. I am so tempted to uncover it. Has anyone else uncovered theirs in the West Midlands? Um, I was having a feel around as we do and I do know that there is a roller here. So a leaf has started growing. Um, but I believe that we are due some minus ones uh, over the next couple of weeks and so I'm not quite ready to uncover it yet. Um, at least my brain is saying not to, but my heart very much wants to. Um, next to it we have, which has been bent a little bit out of shape by my uh, excessive wrapping there, uh, the Rhododendron Swellenhensi which again is looking fine. It has got a little bit of a canopy around it. The winter has not damaged that at all. Uh, my Butia is looking okay. I had a bit of fleece around the crown. It's not spear pulled or anything. I'm hoping that it's pulled through without any real problems. This is my first year overwintering a Butia odorata. Um, so I'm hoping that we're good. I hope that I don't regret my choice to add that to the garden. So we've got here the Scheffler Taiwaniana. Again, it's, it's come through winter really, really well. It's looking so juicy. It's uh, got a good height on it now. And I do hope to get rid of some of the bottom leaves so that these can start growing up on that single stem to eventually create a tree, which should surpass the tree fern. And the tree fern itself isn't doing too badly either. Um, definitely a, a feature in my garden. These are now, it's now sporting um, two years worth of leaves. So I didn't take off all of the leaves from last year's winter. 
we then have this set here which isn't looking too bad we've got some browning which is obviously expected but um we do have knuckles showing through underneath that straw so i'm very happy to say this will soon be a beautiful green specimen in no time at all so in the undergrowth there you'll see i've got a formium at the back um, some leaves there that uh, the, the dead leaves on the bottom there were from last year's damage which I've just never cleared off but we've got some beautiful leaves that have come through in the middle no problem at all there a holly fern here which remains all year round and a fatia behind it which I bought as a house plant um, it was quite cheap and I just sort of shoved it in the ground and I was quite surprised the other day when I saw the leaves popping through by the fern leaves there it's really sized up super quickly and they really do like shade um, I'm a fan of the red robin as you know that just stays amazing all year round and it's especially gorgeous now that the red leaves are popping out for the spring it's definitely a reliable one and under here we have Calmrops radicalis which is also doing well, I'm glad to say. What else do we have here then? There's my Camrops humilis. Uh, it looks like it's come through winter okay. No spear pull at the moment. However, you may recall if you've seen my spear pull in June video, I'll pop a link in the corner, that this actually uh, spear pulled last year in the summer months. So we'll see if that young growth pulls all the way through this year. I should have protected it perhaps to be honest but um i'm hopeful seeing as the winter was a little bit milder this time around so at the back there we have some fargesia as they say first year it sleeps second year it creeps so we do have some creeping going on you can see some combs really stretching up there now so that will hopefully push out and hide this area of the fence more evergreen shrubs my old cobra there, a firm favourite of mine because of the yellow speckles. Another holly fern we've got there, the Fatsia polycarpa. It's just come through its first winter in the garden and it's looking great. It's really nice to have another variety of Fatsia quite near to the Japonica there. The Cordlin australis, a form of fatality which has come back now with two heads and that seems to have pulled through the winter fine as well. Next to that we have a euphorbia. You'll see I've put my Trachycarpus ragnaranius there as I plan to plant it there in place of that fatia which will be getting moved to another area of the garden. So there we have the smaller of my Dixonia antarctica. It has got the obligatory browning to be expected after winter um, however there is still some green on there and the most important place that we want protection is in that crown i use straw as you can see i wrapped bubble wrap around the bottom half of the crown and i'm hoping that all is well with this so far it's looking good and uh, i hope that we'll have a lovely flush of green fronds in no time i've got some fleece nearby to put straight over it if the temperatures drop again so here we have one of my trachycarpus fortunii evergreen reliable stretching out now i must say so the camera ops there looking rather yellow i believe that's because i should have repotted that ages ago so i'll get on to that in my spring jobs video another formium baby pine tree there lots of green to be looking at my yuccas seem to have pulled through okay i do have what looks like some bacterial damage going on at the bottom of that yucca gloriosa if you recognize what's happening here there is some leaf spot um, feel free to comment and let me know what you've done to contain that i do plan to cut off all the leaves at the bottom it will help me develop uh, more of a trunk anyway but um i just don't want any of that leaf spot to get near the top first year again overwintering that one so perhaps some research for me to do to make sure that that one pulls through okay tracky carpet at the back 
more Fatsias. Another Fatsia japonica doing really well. Pulled through winter beautifully. I do love this one. It is in a pot. The leaves grow a little bit smaller on there. So something for you to note if you don't have uh, the space to put one of these in the ground. They do grow well in pots as well. There's the size of the pot my hand in there for scale so it's quite a large pot but it's very much happy in there and uh it's sizing up nicely another yucca there the variegated version again a little bit of damage on some of the outer leaves but the inner leaves look just fine so more evergreen on this side euphorbia silver swan there Anonymous shrubs, Pittosporum tom thumb, the arrow bamboo, which is probably one of my favourite, I would say, and that's because of the bigger, wider, glossy leaves that it sprouts. Tracky princess hybrid. I've also picked up a trochodendron araloides. That's gorgeous, that is. Look at that, like a wheel. More on this in future video. Yucca rostrata, it's pulled through okay. I do plan to take it out of that pot this year, put it in something a bit bigger. The loquat joins the evergreen crew. Cordial in there. Another unanimous that will flower shortly. It flowers beautifully white. I'm going to be cutting that down. I first planted that as a really small shrub. Um, I'll cut it back. I do plan to get the loquat in that area there, into the ground, just behind my waggy there. My Philostachys nigra has also pulled through winter just fine. So that's it. As you can see, the warm temps haven't hit quite yet, but here we are in the Midlands with a tropical style garden that's come through winter with plants that are thriving. These plants are hardy and require very little fuss to get them going. I'm definitely finding that having an evergreen backbone gives the garden some consistency and means that throughout the whole season I'm able to enjoy it as it evolves and as this lot puts on some more growth this year it will create some space underneath for underplanting. Really looking forward to that. And by the way, I couldn't wait any longer to unwrap my Moussa Basdu after the winter period. So if you click on this video next, you'll be able to see how that went.